All right, so my name is Fernando. I'm going to be the student in the Netherlands, and I'm going to be talking about large margin nearest neighbor classification, or element N. And this is uh, a work that uh, we did last year. I was a Google Summer of Code student working on this project, mentored by Georg Seller. Uh, well, it's basically a metric learning algorithm that you can use in order to improve your classification accuracy with K nearest neighbor. Let me introduce a little bit. Let me remind you what this Mahalanobis distance. So, okay, we all know this Euclidean distance, so just the intuitive concept of distance that we use normally. So we have, this is basically an inner product of the difference of two vectors. So that's the Euclidean distance. With the Mahalanobis distance, what we do is squeeze in between that product, a matrix. And what this allows us to do is to give more importance to some of the dimensions of the data than to others, okay? Well, the technicality is that this matrix has to be positive semi-definite, so this result in here is guaranteed to be positive. So the distance has to be positive, okay? So how, what does this have to do with K nearest neighbor classification? So K nearest neighbor classification, you, you've got to use a distance to measure, to compare your future vectors. And some things that we could ask to this distance is to amplify the information and to, to amplify the dimensions that contains most of the variance of the data, so the most informative dimensions, while shrink the dimensions that are not really helping us to discriminate between feature vectors that belong to different classes. All right? And apart from that, we would like that this distance can adapt to different data sets. Okay? So basically, LMNN is a solution to this. It allows you to find a, a Mahalanobis distance that is going to maximize, in some sense, improve more generally classification with K nearest neighbors. Okay, so let's go how this is done. So in LMNN, what we do is for each feature vector, we are going to define a set of target neighbors. Okay, and just a little bit of notation. So here with this J. Carvi arrow I, I'm going to mean that the future vector xj is a target neighbor of xi. This concept of target neighbors will make sense just in a moment. And therefore, fun, like, yeah, so this is not really, so that j, that xj is a target neighbor of the future vector xi doesn't mean the contrary thing. You can think about it if you want. But. So, okay. So with LMNN, the Mahalanobis distance that we are going to be looking for is going to be such that the nearest neighbors under this Mahalanobis distance are going to be the target neighbors, okay? So what this means is that there is not going to be any other future vector of another different class whose distance is going to be less or equal than the distance of every data point to its target neighbors. So this is what I'm symbolizing here. So I is just any future vector of the data set. L will be any other future vector of the data set that is labeled differently of the future vector Xi. And we are saying that they cannot be in the data set such XL whose distance is less or equal to the distance of this future vector Xi to any of its target's neighbors. Okay? That's the main concept of LMNN. And well, the large margin part comes because we want to do this with good generalization properties, so we are going to introduce a margin in this inequality. So this is similar to the margin that we use with support vector machines. Okay? It's a similar concept. So here, I'm just basically repeating what I just said. So let's wrap it up. So for any future vector i, we don't want that future vectors that are labeled differently, so future vectors L, have a distance that is less than, so that they are not closer to the target neighbors with the margin that I just said. And since it, this is not, in general, it's not going to be possible to do it for any data set, we are going to use slack variables, so as we, so as the soft margin of support vector machines, okay? So if we take into account these constraints, so basically just the last constraint, the other ones, I just incomplete and put a regularizer in the distance between 
its data point with its target neighbors. Also, a regularizer for the Slack variables. So what we're getting here is a semi-definite program. Okay, and this is basically is going to return for you a Mahalanovich distance. That is the solution of element n. Okay, so you could take a software package that general purpose for semi-definite programs, plug this in, and just get your Mahalanovich distance. But so this doesn't scale so well according to the authors of LMNN, so you could be able to solve problems up to 600 data points, something similar, using a general purpose solver. So what they did, they derived a specific uh, purpose solver for this problem, which is able to scale much better. And that's what is implemented in Shogun, of course. But I'm not going to give the details of how this solver works. I think it's out of the scope of this talk, but if you want to look into it, I think it's interesting, fun ideas, so you can take a look at this paper. But before going to the IPython notebook and show how this all works in Shogun, so I want to, yes, show you another interpretation that you can give to LMNN. So as I said, this Mahalanovich distance is positive semi-definite, so we can always write it as the square of another matrix, okay? So L transpose times L. Under this matrix, so what we uh, we can think of what we are doing with element n is a linear projection of the input space, and g we are just using this Euclidean distance. No, so when we work in the input space, we we will be using this Mahalanovich distance, but we can in also interpret the solution of element n as doing a projection of the data, linear projection, and using Euclidean distance. So using this alternative interpretation, we can also use element for more things than just classification. So for instance, if we use L rectangular, we can be doing dimension reduction. And if we force L to be diagonal, so that would mean we either pick or not some of the dimensions, or we weight differently each of the dimensions, we can perform feature selection. Okay, so now let's see a little bit how these things actually work. Okay, so first let me go through a couple of toy examples to just ensure a little bit more the concept with some plots and so on. So first I am generating a really toy data set. So what we have here is three classes. And one of the classes is really spread along the x-axis, but really a little bit spread along the y-axis. Okay. Now, if I plot the unit cycle using Euclidean distance, so we get this circumference. Okay. So it's weighting equally the two dimensions. Now, if we input this data to element n, so first here I'm creating Shogun features. So the, uh, the, the, the level. Yeah. yeah, it's the unit circle and the clear distance, so that means, so are the points that whose distance is between zero and one from the origin. And what the circumference that delimits this circle are the points that are exactly whose distance to the origin is exactly one, okay? So what I'm going to do is basically use element n with this data, get the Mahalanovich distance, and see how the unit circle and the Mahalanovich distance looks like. Okay, and we should see that it actually is weighting differently to the dimensions, because as we saw, one of the classes is really spread along y, along x, sorry, so x is the informative axis, while the y-axis is not telling as much information, okay? So, I create my element n class, give the features and the values, give this value of k, so k in element n is the number of target neighbors that we are using per future vector, so it's like the k of k nearest neighbors, just simply that, and just run the algorithm. So the special purpose that I mentioned above is also an iterative algorithm, so I'm setting some the initial solution where, where it has to start the maximum number of iterations, and that's all. If you don't input this initial transformation just because you have no idea of how your data looks like, so 
In second world, we are going to do is to just use PCA to get a linear projection to start from. Okay. So then, once I have trained with LMNN, I can get in the linear transform, I square it to get the Mahalanobis distance. You could also just substitute these two lines by a LMNN dot get distance. And I'm plotting this unit cycle. And we can see that it's clearly weighting differently the dimensions. Okay? So now we can see that. So, another yeah. so example, I can go a little bit faster through this one. So I'm creating here, ah, well, yeah, so also here in the same, uh, in the same example. So before I was uh, right, uh, so sort of visualizing this Mahalanobis distance through its unit cycle, but we also, I also talk about this linear transformation. So here I'm plotting the points after the linear transformation and how they look like before. Okay. So I think this, so in this second data set, so I'm creating different, so also multi-class example. So we have different classes that, so each of them basically owns a y value while they are completely spread along the x. And now what I'm doing is plotting something that I like to call neighborhood graphs, which basically means, so I'm putting an edge between two points if, well, when one of them is this target neighbor, so it's the closest point to it in the data set. So I'm doing this using the Euclidean distance in the input space. Now I'm giving this data to LMNN and using, so this would be in the, with the data points in the input space, so I'm not using the linear transformation, but I'm plotting this neighborhood graph under the Mahalanobis distance. So here we can see that the examples are pretty much, so this will be, if we think about the classification, this will be like error equal to one, so all of them are wrong, because we are saying that the nearest neighbor is, belongs to another class, Well, here you have corrected for this one, right? You have these lines along the x. So the, near, the nearest neighbor, the one nearest neighbor, is always of the same class. And using this alternative interpretation of LMNN, so actually projecting the data, what we can see is that they pass to be a spread along x to form this kind of clusters where they are differentiated, okay? But now, let's see something with some more real-world data. So first, a future. <laughs> this is. So first I want to show a future selection application. So this is a metagenomics data set. If someone works with metagenomics, maybe you can describe better than me what that is. Okay, so metagenomics is based on studying the genome of bacteria. And the motivation of it is, so we want to uh, infer some properties of uh, an organism, like for instance this data is for apes, but instead of studying the genome of the apes, we're going to study the genome or the genomic data of bacteria that, of microorganisms that live in the apes, okay? In this case are bacteria that are in the gut of the apes. So this data set is the dimension is in around 1,500. We have not that many data points, but what we want to do here is future selection because we have a lot of features, so we want to see which ones, which of these features are actually important, which are actually telling us properties. So this is, you, you will be interested to do this if you want to get more insight on your data. But before, so just to get a little bit of an interpretation of how the data looks like. What I'm doing is using a dimensionality reduction method called TDSN. So I think this was like T-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding or something similar. So it's a method for dimensionality reduction that is good at making embeddings that are easy to visualize, that they are good to visualize. So your classes are going to be well separated. So you can do something in that. 
So this is one of the nice things of Sherwin, right? So you have your data, you want to use LMNN, but on the way, you have also a lot of dimensionality reduction algorithms and other many things. So you can just use any of those methods and get some more insight on your data. So I have three different classes of apes. So green points, red points, and blue points. So one of them are chimpanzees, bonobos, and, I, and gorillas, I think they were. So yeah. So the classification in this data set that we can see, so even if we embed it in a two-dimensional space, so it's quite easy to classify this data. The classes are reasonably separable. We can see that even if I use k nearest neighbor directly, so without any element, and I get pretty high accuracy of classification. But we are not really interested in this case of doing this classification. We are interested in doing future selection. So I'm using this method of LMNN set diagonal to actually say, OK, so I want this linear transform, the L that I talked about before, to be forced to be diagonal. OK. So that's basically what I'm doing here. Set again the maximum number of iterations, the initial solution for the iterative algorithm. And here, so for the notebook to run faster, I just use a subset of the total number of features. So instead of using the 1,470 something that there was, I used 300. But what we can see is that the transformation given by LMNN just got, so 75 of these 300 elements are non-zero. So that means that actually this data has a lot of features in there that might not be really relevant. So this is future selection we are performing. Well, I did offline the future selection using all the, all the 1,472 features, and I got just that 158 at non-zero. So this is strictly zero I was using. So if you put your threshold a little bit higher, which might make sense. Maybe you are getting weights that are really small. So you might even get less dimensions, which are actually relevant, at least in this element and sense. OK. And now, finally, so I'm going to skip through that plot. So one example from classification, because you might tell me that it's a little bit unfair to, to compare classification performance with LMNN and KNN, because so you use KNN with Euclidean distance, and you don't preprocess your data. So that's not a really fair comparison, because so you, 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 you're you using an algorithm that is actually taking into account the what's the range of your dimensions. So what I mean with this is if you are using KNN and one dimension of your data is ranging between 0 and 1,000, and another one is ranging between 0 and 1, so a really small difference in this dimension that ranges between 0 and 1,000, that can be of 10 units, is going to be much bigger than any of the difference that you can get in the dimension that ranges between 0 and 1. So this is not really fair because when you can compute the Euclidean distance, you are just adding all these components up of, uh, in the different dimensions, so pretty much the difference is in the dimension that has a really small dynamic range is not really going to affect the Euclidean distance. So what we can do to make a more fair comparison is preprocess the data, so we can make that all the dimensions are ranging between 0 and 1, and we can also even widen the data, so we also get that the covariances, so the covariance of the data is a unit matrix, so we account for cross-correlations, that element and also is taking into account, but if you use a uh, distance such as Euclidean distance, you are not taking these things into account. Okay. So this is basically what I did here. I can go back later and if you are interested in how some of these things are made, but I just want to show you the results. So this is the future matrix of the data before and after whitening. And this is what you get at the end. So this is classification accuracy when I don't preprocess the data. So yeah, LMNN is really good, but yeah, it's a, I just explained why this comparison is not really fair. But even when you preprocess your data, you're getting there for this data set a 4% accuracy improvement with LMNN. So the takeaway with this is, yeah, if you are using KNN, for classification, so I will always give it a try and yeah, just input your data first to LMNN and use the distance given by LMNN to classify to, for your nearest neighbor classifier because 
<laughs> yeah, it makes sense. You get some improvement in there. Okay. So, doubts, comments, curiosities. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, we had all these kind of talks before. Do you, do you know uh, you can do these things in a feature space so that you can yeah, there is. put the margins on, on manifolds in your space? So there, there is a, the authors, so this Bengenberger, so they actually have uh, formulated the kernelized LMNL, so yeah, it makes total sense. It's not implemented in Showen, though, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. There are also uh, interesting extensions to LMNL, this gradient boosted LMNL, which would be also nice to have. Do you know cases where this, where this doesn't work? with that because with, with k nearest neighbors you are not you, you are not uh, assuming that your decision boundary has to be linear but but this is done also at a local level so you you are not targeting all the data points of the same class. You are just targeting a small subset. So, yeah, I don't see in principle there, there has to be limitations of this method or cases where it doesn't work well, but I don't see that a non-linear decision boundary will affect it badly because of this locality property as well. So what I mean is, in the objective, what you are trying to do is to minimize the distance between each data point and the target neighbors, but the target neighbors are not all the neighbors of the same class, it's just k neighbors of the same class. Uh, so at least I don't have an intuition but that you could work. But uh, thank you. Oops.